Good morning everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Sunday, April 21st, 2024. I pray that the Spirit of God will be with you today and I pray that His blessing will be on your life. And may God fill your heart with joy, love and peace today as you seek Him. Amen. Our reading today comes to us from Revelation chapter 3, reading from verse 7 to 13. And it says, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. But I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches. Amen. We give God thanks this morning for his word of wisdom and his word of guidance. Now we are on the sixth church, the church of Philadelphia, which means brotherly love. So this church it is a warm church it is a lovable church however this church it was struggling to remain faithful to god so this was a time period from ad 1798 to ad 1844 this is a period of the great advent awakening so the time of william miller so some of the traits of this church is that they are known for their fellowship and their warmth and their family spirit and it enjoy nurturing its members so that is why it is called the church of brotherly love and we need some of that today in the church we need we need back more brotherly love in the church because it seems like we have it done in theory these days, but the practicality of it thereof, we are lacking. We are lacking. And the characteristics of, of that brotherly love need to be exhibited more in the church today. So its membership grows through in reach. So I realize we don't have that much focus on in reach activities as it relates to the church well i could be wrong but from what i see it seems that the in reach as aspect of 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 the church is lacking greatly but the focus on outreach is heavily emphasized and worked towards we are zealous more about outreach but you know we just barely like we're tapping the waters when it comes on to inreach. And there must be a balance. Inreach 
is as much important as outreach. In fact, if we are to, to, to be more successful in outreach, we have to do more as it relates to inreach. We have to care for our members. We have to look out for our members. We have to evangelize within and let that evangelism flow outward. Amen. However, in this church, we realize that some of its members can be easily sidetracked with erroneous doctrines because of lack of deep Bible study. What did the reading say? They say that they claim to be Jews, but they are not. Right? And that is why a deep study and understanding of the word is important because you have a lot of us pretending to be something that we are not because our action does not demonstrate that we are really following the principles of God. We are not Jew, spiritual Jew. We are imposters because we are not spending time to know the truth. And even if we know the truth, as we would claim, we don't apply it. We don't apply it. So the Lord is saying that, look here, I know thy works. And what? I have set before you an open door that no man can shut. Right? So whatever God does, it cannot be undone by anyone except God himself. So he knows that in this church, there are those who are holding on to the dust, said the Lord. But he is also aware of those who are not of him, are pretending to be a part of his ranks when they are not, pretending to be a part of his fold when they are not. And what he said that he's going to do, he says, because thou hast kept, what? The word of God in the time of patience so in other words because you spend time to study the word of god and know the word of god when the hour of temptation comes or when temptation presents itself which will come not me everybody will experience time of temptation so we all will go through a period of temptation at some point in our life it's a must it says that in this time the same word that you have been feeding upon when there was no temptation that word will come up and be your safeguard in that hour of temptation understand so you see what is why it is important to study the word of god because what it will be invaluable when those, when those moments come. So he's saying to us, hold fast. Don't allow anybody to take your crown. Don't allow anybody to take your crown. So, it, so this is telling me, therefore, that your crown can be taken. So for those of us who are farming full of ourselves, we need to be careful lest someone else come and take our space. So we need to decide, are we for God or we just want to keep doing what we want to do? Because if that's the plan, to do what we want to do and not what God wants to do, then we're going to lose our crown. No two way about it. But he also says that what? He that overcome, if we overcome, he will make us a what? A pillar. A pillar in the temple of God. You know what a pillar is? That thick column that all up the structure together. So in other words, you become 
a very vital piece of that structure. Nearly unmovable. You understand? He says that what? He shall go no more out. And what? I will write upon him. So you and I will what? Get a new name. A new name. The scripture said that we will be given a name that no man knows except he that received that name. The songwriter said, There's a new name written down in glory and it's mine. Oh yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am now forever, nevermore to roam. Amen. So, I want my new name and I want my crown. And I pray that you also want your new name and your crown. So, what we got to do to receive that? We have got to be faithful. Because if we are not faithful, then we can just forget about these two things. So, what he says, he says that what we need to hear. So, we need to listen. Don't be stubborn. So, I hope that as we read this passage this morning and all the others that we went through, that we will hear the voice of the Spirit. And we will listen to the voice of the Spirit. And we will be obedient to the voice of the Spirit. So that when God comes again, which He will do, He will find us faithful. And then we can receive our thus reward to go with Him to the new Jerusalem that will come down out of heaven from God. Amen. May God continue to bless you and I and keep us faithful until that perfect day when He shall return. God bless you and have a wonderful day.